It sounds simple, right? Human technology is what got us here, and human technology is what's going to save us from climate change. By using special technologies to reflect sunlight, or robots that remove water from ocean or stratosphere, we could control climate and get back to normal. But wait, is this possible? Geoengineering, which refers to technologies designed to intervene and change the climate of the Earth, originated many years ago. After the Second World War, a lot of people were looking to modify the atmosphere at humans' convenience. At that time, there was a competition to show which country had the most advanced technologies and could eventually control nature, therefore showing who was the most powerful. Years later, humankind realized that it could actually alter the climate, but not in the same way originally thought. The excessive use of fossil fuels combined with rapid economic growth generated an increase in global temperature and changes in climatic patterns of the whole Earth, threatening the well-being of millions of people and the economies of a majority of countries. This is why scientists and engineers dusted off their books about climate control and began to look for modern solutions to climate change, using ingenious and many times dangerous engineering designs, forming the field of what is now known as geoengineering or climatic intervention. Geoengineering can be divided in two categories. The first is controlling solar radiation, which right now consists of either reducing the flux of solar radiation that penetrates the atmosphere or increasing the reflection of the solar rays that reach Earth's surface. So let's give it a thought. It makes sense to think that if the sun's interaction with greenhouse gases is what is warming the Earth, then we can just reduce a few solar rays and problem solved, right? That's why some people have suggested that special mirrors should orbit the Earth to reflect solar radiation, or that we should inject aerosols into the atmosphere. We know the aerosol method works because it has been proven time and again throughout Earth's geological history. When volcanic eruptions or asteroid impacts released a huge amount of natural aerosols into the stratosphere, causing a global cooling effect. Here we find the first problem associated with trying to reduce the sun's radiation into Earth. The cooling events in the geological past we just described, resulting from aerosols in the air, were also associated with massive extinctions. This is because not only the Earth's temperature was reduced, but also because it changed the ocean's currents and decreased the photosynthesis of plants and algae due to the absence of light, causing irreversible ecological changes. So it doesn't seem like such a good idea to have that happening again right now. The second group of geoengineering designs are intended to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. It makes sense. If CO2 was what got us in this predicament, removing it from the atmosphere would be the way to solve the issue straight from its roots, right? But how could we do that? One of the most talked about solutions is to use ocean fertilization. This method consists of pouring nutrients in the ocean to prompt the growth of phytoplankton, which in turn will remove CO2 from the atmosphere by doing photosynthesis. Uh, but wait, this sounds familiar to me. Oh yes, somebody already did it last year and it was climate change itself. The increase in desertification in the Sahara Desert, which meant more dirt and dust in the air traveling to the Atlantic Ocean, which along with high ocean temperatures generated an exacerbated growth of macroalgae or seaweed it's called sargassum, which in turn caused ecological imbalance and chaos for several coastal communities. So considering all the offers geoengineering has for us, it would seem that every new solution has the potential to create unexpected issues that would make things worse. And moreover, not everyone has a say in deciding if we ought to take these approaches or not. This is why it's so important to those interested in geoengineering to consider climate justice in their discussion. For example, trusting that geoengineering will resolve everything could help movements against the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions in the first place. The manifesto HUM, Hands Off Mother Earth, argues that developing and implementing geoengineering would be like giving up on the search of meaningful change in our society. We live in a complex and interconnected world, and whichever change we want to apply globally will be reflected differently in different places and for different people. Therefore, if we want to cure this illness in our climate, instead of heading to the medicine cabinet and picking up the first prescription we see, it would be better to take the necessary actions to avoid creating the sickness in the first place. I'm Bernie Bastien and this is Climate Justice for Planet Earth.